Good morning, everyone. Treasure Troller here. And we're going to review episode two of Alone. We are here at McPhail Field in Scottville. And so, if some of you may remember, I believe he was the general manager of the New York Yankees, Lee McPhail. I believe it was his father that started a bank here in Scottville. And then I guess they moved to New York or they moved out of the area. And they donated this parcel of property to the city. And back up until about maybe 2000, this was the home field. Right over there. Can, can I get them? Uh, maybe it went too far. Okay, yeah. Right there. This is the home stands. And then over there was actually about the size of the visitor stands. It was a uh, very close to the uh, field. The, a lot of people just walked down the sidelines. There, there used to be a track around the field here. And you just walk up and down the track. But enough of that. Let's get a little bit too alone. There's not a lot today, but I think it's more about overreach, a little bit about overreach today, and maybe a hack that I don't like. It's one of these uh, don't hate the player, hate the game kind of things. The first thing is. 150 yard shot at a moose with a recurve bow. It's a pretty long shot. I mean, the se that's the second goal post down there, what you're seeing, the second goal post. Because maybe you got 100. 20 it's about from where we're at right now it's very close the it's 120 yards from goal post to goal post and then we could be back so it's about from there and you're aiming at a target that's about maybe the the goal post would be, you know, it's it's a it's a very long overreach shot. Maybe it was a little bit closer. Can't tell. All you got was the last thing was 150 yards. But even at 100 yards with a recurve bow, that's got to be that's got to be a tough shot. Not so much as it is to hit the target, but it is for that broadhead arrow to to do a lot of damage. I think that was an overreach. Shooting, shooting at the beaver, other than getting wet, I don't think that was such a bad shot. Other than getting wet, chances are if it was too deep, the arrow would just float. You'd have a chance of getting the arrow back. But, you know, just sticking the arrow in the bottom and losing it. So I don't mind the downward shots. It's the shots they take up, you know, at birds up in the tree. That's the one that, the one that uh, gets me. But I, I 
just really don't understand these these people are really good with the ball but they miss some rather simple shots a moose broadside I mean to completely whiff on the moose <clears throat> But it was a shot that, to me, shouldn't have been taken to begin with. Now, the other one, the other one that might be a bit of an overreach is not taking the feral rod. Is not having the ability to easily make fire. Now, the other ones that had lost their feral rods and couldn't make fire, maybe they weren't as skilled as this guy was but I'm just thinking that it's it might be a little bit of an overreach as, as good as you are making fire without the ferro rod I'm I'm not sure but he does have I think it's Keith he does have a voice for radio, however you want to say it. Um, I think everyone should just use Keith's voice during their during their talks. Just let Keith talk. So I think Keith has a, a great future ahead of him, like reading documentaries or doing like a YouTube channel and talking about stories or whatnot i think he'd have, he'd do really well he's got a great voice maybe i'll send him a transcript and he can do a treasure troller vlog i think he's got great voice for radio as they would say um the other thing that but i i hope the feral rod going without the feral rod i hope it works i'm not gonna I, you know, I'm not going to do the see I told you so right now. And I'm not even going to say it was a bad move. I'm I'm going to say that as, as good as these archers are, as good as these people are with the bow, and as good as he is at making fire, sometimes they overreach. And the overreach... Can come back to haunt them so i won't make fun of keith about that i could make fun of him about losing his fishing line but we won't the only real bad thing about that is i almost think this river is better suited for putting the fishing line in the water than than the nets but uh, the one guy did catch a fish in his net i don't know the river to me is kind of sketchy. It's pretty cloudy for where it is. But we get to the hack that I I don't really like. And that's the the beeswax in the bottom of the quiver to help carry water. I'm not sure I like that hack. It it seems a little See, I don't mind them taking like they were talking about like their wrist guards or their arm guards or something and taking the arm guards and converting them into whatever or even as the the individual now known as Kevin Hart was talking about taking a hammock and converting the hammock into a gill net. That I don't mind. But that's something that you're taking and that you're utilizing in another way. To me, you're altering the quiver and I'm just not I'm 
I'm just not sure about that one. I mean, I'd just rather have them say, here, here's your 10 items, and oh, and by the way, we're going to give you a freaking canteen. I, it's a hack that I don't like. And then you could say, well, you know, they, they alter the multi-tool. You know, they take the screwdriver and screwdriver thing on it and turn it into a, a punch, but there's a punch already on there. But so anyways, I, I understand the, the multi-tool, but it's still an item that they're allowed to take and they just alter the item that they're taking. They're not, they're not turning the, I don't know. I'm having a hard time defining it. I, I know that, I know that I don't have a problem with it. I just know that, uh, Taking the quiver and turning it and, and putting a bee wax bottom on it for a water reservoir is not what the is not what the uh, the quiver was made for and you're altering the quiver. As far as the multi tool goes, they're already giving you ten things on it. So there's really not much, uh, not much more you can do with it. That's that would really be more of a. To me, that's not a hack. If you want to take the scissors and make them into something else, make one of them. You can, uh, I don't know, take it apart and you can use one of the scissor blades and sharpen it, and make it an, into a knife or something. Uh, that's fine, but. Altering an item like that to me, I'm not, I'm not keen on. So I think the alone vlogs will get a little bit better after this one. I mean, the first one is always a fun one to make. And then the, uh, the next two vlogs are always kind of, we're just getting introduced to the, the crew the next vlogs will be, I think, a little bit better, but there just seems to be a little bit of an overreach this year. And, um, I mean, I can understand taking the shot maybe at day 20, but this was when the, in the first four days. Um, I mean, that's a desperation shot, and... That was maybe the third day out there. Uh, wasn't good to take. Also, if I find it, I'm going to provide a link. On those bleachers right over there, I got the chance to talk to or interview. It's the one and only interview I've ever done. It was with Coach Mike Hankwitz. He was, his last job was the defensive coordinator at Northwestern University. He's coached on national championship teams with Colorado. He was at uh, Texas A&M, Colorado, Michigan, Wisconsin, Purdue. And I did an interview with him. We talked a little bit about college football. We talked right then we talked about the, um, the NILs before they became... Uh, sort of okay and you could offer them I'll provide a link in there it was a fun interview he played for Michigan uh, back in the 60s the year that they got beat God, I don't know what it was it was hor it was a horrible beat and then the next year they came back and and beat Ohio State which Woody Hayes says was the biggest win Oshenbeckler ever had. Um, it was a really good time. 
Uh, Mike's a graduate of Mesa County Central. He played on this field. This is his old stomping grounds. We he played here. And uh, I'll provide a link. I hope you take a few minutes and uh, and watch that. It was a great inter It was a fun interview. I don't know how great it was. That was the first time I've ever interviewed someone. But I hope you take a minute to check it out. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some interesting stuff with the loan coming up. So we can have a little bit of fun. We get some uh, high orphan tap outs. To once again prove to Kevin Hart that the orphan factor stands firm. So that's the treasure troller saying aloha and good day.